when you live in a desert, this is a lot of rain. I think we got just about five inches of rain in a couple of days. And of course, me being smart, I had just put two inches of water on both the fields by my house. So I got water standing everywhere, probably 40 acres of water. So I'll go take you for a walk. But I gotta get gumboots on or I'll sink to my knees. Well, the rain has affected everything, but the horses got the tombstones broke on their bale feeder, so Victoria's in there. Bella has grown a tremendous amount. She looks like a little mud runner. And there's muck everywhere. I mean, those horses are standing on drier ground because it's grass there. But like I said, in this country, a couple of days, this will all be dry. But as you can see, Bella's getting big. This weekend, she'll probably go away to the stallions. Well, Victoria will. Bella's goes to go with. Anyhow, mud, mud, mud. So, I'll bring you out some fields. This part makes you kind of sick. But I think that half of this water, there's a real big lake over there, and then there's about four more over there that are make this look small. I think half the water is going to be gone in two days, and I'll just have drowned out spots. I probably won't reseed until after I cut the barley for green feed, and then I'll just go and I'll buy a couple bags of grass seed and see if I can borrow a disc drill from someone and I'll plant the lowlands to grass. The farm to my south, there's 40 acres of water so it'll make you puke if you go look at it and I finally farmed every lowland and put a couple hundred pounds of fertilizer on it all for naught. So anyhow there's some alfalfa coming up now show you. I don't know what you'll see. Anyhow, you know, there's little alfalfa plants coming up. So, and like I said, the barley's thin, but I planted it thin here so that the hay can grow. Anyhow, we don't normally get rain. Or we don't count on it, but I had just put two inches of water on both these fields beside my house. So you get almost five inches and we haven't had a rain in May in over three years. And we definitely, when they tell us we got 70% rain, we don't ever believe it. Like I said, we, our annual, annual precipitation is less than 11 inches and that's not quite in our area, that's further to the west. So like we usually count on about eight inches of moisture. That's with snow and rain. So to get a rainstorm that gives you four and three quarter inches is fairly abnormal for us and like I said my land doesn't drain it's got little pockets everywhere and we don't have drain tile because it's not usually an issue but the lowlands get planted to grass and we'll get on with life the cows are in the soup the horses are in the soup but I had hauled out some purebreds and heifers and stuff so we got quite a few cows out even though because they went on to tame grass but this rain will be awesome on the native grass because it was not growing yet. And June 1st is when we're going out there, so we need something to grow. So as the sun comes out, grass will be going like crazy. So we'll bring it out in a sec. So this is my grass hay field. It's coming along. It needs 150 pounds of nitrogen, but Anyhow, we just did, I just had finished watering it, and then we got that rain. Well, it was raining while I was watering this hay because the pivot went around clockwise, and then it went to the end of the hay over there, and then I went a quarter circle back, and that, so this has been watered, and then we had it, so, but this part, it kind of runs all off, and then to the end of the field here, and then it goes to that lowland over there that, has about four acres drowned out. 
but I'll go show you the hay I planted last year that I replanted this year and you'll see how ugly that looks but in the sand we don't have an easy time establishing forages so that's why I paid someone good money on my other field that I just was showing you to come in and plant my alfalfa for me because I figured it was worth it so on that other field by the time I paid someone to come in and plant it plus the cost of the seed and then they went they seeded heavy so I had to get more seed just the alfalfa planting and seed was a hundred dollars an acre and then I still had my fertilizer and my barley on it but you got to feed cows and if they nothing grows you can't feed them so anyhow I'll bring you back out in a second here so this is the pathetic hay crop from last year that I planted I had problems with the drill and then uh, then it it laid for a month after I cut it and that didn't help it any so that's why you can see kind of strips where the swaths were but basically they're just parts where it didn't catch so here's a here's a spot where it's just all tansy mustard and dandelions and then there's good hay around it and then they're just above there there's a spot where there's nothing again so I reseeded this and of course so now it's been irrigated and rained on so those, she those seeds should all come now but it's pretty pathetic in a normal in a normal year you gotta remember our fall or our fall our spring was delayed so if we had warmed up at the end of March and if people were all farming by the first week of April and we had that kind of weather this stuff should be just about knee high so it's kind of been slowed back because of our cold spring and our lack of spring for quite a while so so it's behind but you can't change that part but like I said hopefully the reseed grows well and because I don't have a lot of hay this year you see a big dandelion there growing not what you want to see but like like here there's just absolutely nothing here and you can see that it was planted on an angle and then I planted it I planted this place twice last year with the alfalfa and grass and it was it's pretty awful so like I said I spent a bunch of money doing this again but cows got to eat horses got to eat so is what I do why well, I just found it found it uh, found a new alfalfa plant that probably those ones those ones probably were seeds that were sitting and didn't uh, germinate last year and then germinated this spring I came in and used the hoe drill, so I'll have to re-roll the rocks here. So the disc drill will bounce over them, but the hoe drill brings them up. So anyhow, like I said, I take you over to that lake, but it makes me ill. And like I said, this there's there's a lot of water on this quarter. I got three quarters of barley planted here, and I. Like I said, last year when I planted the barley, I did the same thing. I planted, well, I planted the whole thing to barley and then this was to hay as well. But I didn't fertilize all the lowlands because we haven't always got them. And I, we hadn't farmed some of those for three years because they were too wet. And now they're all full of water and I put lots of fertilizer down. So, but that's kind of how farming goes. It's just like ranching. You can do all you want and your calves can still die on you. So, but hopefully something grows here. The tansy will die out and maybe some kosher will grow and we'll, we'll bail that. So, we all go back and keep puttering. We haven't done much the last couple days except feed because it's been too rainy. Not a problem we normally have. Something we were pretty excited about, but 
we we would have been fine with like two and a half inches of rain and then you know wait a week and do it again but mother nature kind of rules the roost so i'll bring you out later today trying to hold my body so it blocks the wind. Super snipes out with me. And it's pretty greasy. I'm sinking like two inches every step. And like I said, in the sand, that's not very usual. Usually you can walk anywhere you want, even after you irrigate. So, I don't know, try to make it so it's not so windy, hey, sorry, anyhow, I'm going to freeze brand a bunch of horses tomorrow, so I might uh, record that, but I'll give you another crop tour in a while and we'll see if things start to look nicer, I'm sure like I said, in another week, this will all look really good and there'll just be some drowned out spots, but that's life. So be sure to comment, give it a like, and subscribe and have yourselves a great day.